allow the government of God in his house and see what happens in your nation. Amen. Not without a fight. I'm not telling you it's going to be easy. You better gird your sword on your side. Get ready for war. But we've been in it anyway. Listen, you're either going to be a warrior who's, who's uh, fighting back or you're just going to be one who's just getting hit. Why not fight back and fight on your knees? That's the real fight. Before the Lord, in His presence. That's, what, that's the fighting I'm talking about. I'm not talking about just physical things, going and doing things. Not firstly. I'm talking about in the presence of the Lord, being before the Lord, fighting for your family, fighting for your nation, fighting for your city, fighting for your community, fighting for your grandparents, fighting for your parents, and fighting for your children, and fighting for your grandchildren, and fighting for those who are coming down the line here. You with me? Fighting for your brothers and sisters. Amen. Well, so now what does the Lord get out of this? So the Lord gets a vessel. And the ministry of the Lord comes back into the earth of His voice. Of His voice. The voice from the throne has outlet again in the earth through vessels. The ministry of the kindness and the severity of God comes back into the earth. Ministry of jealousy comes back into the earth. Amen? Just pointing out a few things to us here. The ministry that turns the hearts back to the Lord comes back into the earth. God is strategically moving in this way. I just want you to see it for a second. There are many signs to this. The release of the spirit and power of Elijah back into the earth is one of the greatest signs of our time. This issue of turning hearts back. This issue of the fire of God back in the earth. People with that fire shut up in their bones. The refiner's fire. The consuming fire. The fire of repentance. A baptism of repentance. A baptism of the spirit and fire. True sign in our times. I want you to see that for a second. There's another sign. I want to mention it to you. This sign deals with the release again of the knowledge of God in the fact that there is a bride who is to be married to the Lamb. True sign here in the end. The Lord told me that the release of the knowledge of the Lamb itself would force the end of the age. Force it. Because it will call forth the bride to the Lamb. We are privileged to be here in this time. We are privileged that God chose us to live in such a time as this. In such a time as this, you've been called to the kingdom. For such a time as this, you've been brought in. Don't waste it on frivolous, natural living. Distracted living. Making our lives be surrounded by temporal things alone. I know there's necessities. But may God corral our time and corral where we give our heart and what we give our heart to. God allow us to turn off the entertainment spirit that so craves entertainment and begin to find true meaning and pleasure in the presence of the Lord. God call us back to quietness and stillness where we can hear Him again. God, call us back to the secret place, the hidden place. God, engage us again. Don't you want this? Engage us again with His presence. God, take control of me and possess the reins. God, give me a hunger and a thirst, an insatiable desire for you like never before that you... Come into me, Lord, in an emancipating way, emancipating from me all that hinders, all that stands in the way, all that is obstructing you from having your full way. Teach me the importance again, Lord, of what it means to be before you, to stand before the Lord.
to be clothed with his presence so that wherever we are 24-7, there is the presence of the Lord in us, through us. We ask that Holy Spirit. What do you get out of this? You get a vessel, an eternal vessel. We present ourselves to you for that this morning. Take us back to the starting place. Can you just say that to the Lord? Take me back. Take me back to the starting place. If I came in this thing by bypassing, take me back. Or Lord, if I have forgotten, if I've slipped back into a self-centered mode of living, if I've lost sight or vision of the real fight and the real purpose why I exist and why I'm here in this time, take me back. Take me back to your starting place, your beginning, I ask, Lord. Let every other voice be silenced so that the voice of God may become primary. Can you just pray that prayer? I tell you from the Lord. They anointed the priesthood in the Old Testament by putting blood on the right ear. And that blood on the right ear meant this. You are tuned to the voice of one. And that voice must be louder than all other voices. I ask you, Holy Spirit, this morning to anoint our right ear with the blood of the Lamb. That our ear is not just open to voices, but open to the voice. The voice that spoke and created. The voice that governs the whole of his creation. As the whole book of Daniel proclaims to unrighteous kings. There is a God in heaven that rules and rules over you. And rules over your kingdom. And we ask you to be that voice. God, silence, i got to pray this over you. God, silence voices. There's too many of us are operating off of voices, and those voices aren't helping us. Some of those voices are very bitter. Some of those voices are very tainted, very slanted. God needs to refine our relationships. It's important what voice we're following, what voice is directing us. Give me, give us, in our right ear, that anointing of the blood of the Lamb, that your voice is supreme, and that all other voices bow to that voice, judged by that voice, reckoned by that voice. Give us again in this earth, in our day, in our time, the ministry of the Holy Spirit called the Spirit and power of Elijah. Give us that ministry of fire and baptize us in the Spirit and fire. Give us that ministry of jealousy shut up within us. That fire in our very bones Give us the ministry of the voice. The voice from the throne. The governing voice. The reckoning voice. The directing voice. The creative voice. The voice of the new creation. Give us the ministry of the voice. Give us back the true prophetic ministry. It builds according to the voice.
Give us back the ministry of divine authority. Where the elements themselves come into play. Rain or the lack thereof. The earth itself and the heavens. Ministry of divine authority. Give us the ministry of the kindness and the severity of the Lord. Balance us, O oh God. We need it desperately. To know you in fullness and in wholeness. To know you as you truly are. Give us that ministry that brings the fear and the terror of the Lord back to your own people. Make us ready, O oh God. And that is your goal, Holy Spirit. Make it our goal with you. Make us ready, we ask, Lord. In the name of Jesus. How many want this morning just a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit in fire? It's Acts 2. The coming of the Spirit. But I mean that today. Today. This being that day. Today. A fresh day. So Holy Spirit, unleash yourself upon your people now. Baptize in the Spirit and fire this morning. Come, fire of God. Come, Spirit of the Lord. Open our eyes. Open our hearts. Open our ears. Open our understanding. We pray in the name of Jesus. We ask for that, Lord. Fire of God, we welcome the purifying. We welcome the cleansing. We welcome the washing. We welcome the renewal. We welcome the recovery. We welcome your heart. We welcome your purpose. We welcome your intention. And we align our hearts to you. We welcome you, fire of God. Burn up the wood, hay, and stubble in us. Burn up these elements, Lord, that have taken the position of priority. And reprioritize our hearts. Reprioritize our lives. Reprioritize our time. We prioritize what we give ourselves to. We give ourselves to you. Can you just say that to the Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit, we gladly give ourselves to you. Possess the reins. Baptize us. Immerse us in your presence. Your presence. Your presence. Burn fire of God. Some of you are going to feel the manifestation of that. I can feel it in the room. It's coming on me. Burn. As the Spirit of God comes up on you, burn. It's going to come on your shoulders. A lot of you, that's where I can feel it right now, the shoulders. It's a governmental issue. He is seizing possession of the government of us. Just let Him take it. You are the government. And for you leaders, He'll be the government of you and He'll be His government through you. You know, sweep into the churches in a governmental way and take charge and take possession of his own people. They're his people, the sheep of his pasture. Sweep, Holy Spirit, sweep into the congregations of God, wherever they meet, in the homes or buildings, or wherever it is. Your people, your people. Baptize, Holy Spirit, baptize in your life. Bring us unto fullness. Bring us unto completion. Bring us unto wholeness. Life. Life. Fresh life. Break our wineskins. Can you say that to the Lord? Break our wineskins. Crush them utterly. Give us your new beginning in this thing. Give us your new beginning. Bring us to a place where we don't know, where we've not been this way before, where you can have a new beginning, you can have a fresh start. Bring us to brokenness, bring us to emptiness, so that you might fill us. I'm asking for more than just power manifestations. I'm asking for a people of the presence, a people filled with the glory 
24-7 wherever we are at. Give us that people, Holy Spirit. Give us that people of your presence, of your glory. A people of the name. A people of the fear of the Lord. A people of the testimony of Jesus. A people of the glory of God. Burn, fire of God, burn. Burn in our hearts now. Burn in our hearts. Purify our hearts. Give us an undivided heart that we may fear your name. Just say that back to the Lord. Give me an undivided heart. That I might fear your name in this. Drive out, Lord, every other fear. Especially the fear of man. Bring down the hammer this morning, Holy Spirit. Jeremiah chapter 23. Your word that's like fire, like a hammer that breaks rocks or shatters rock into pieces. Ask you to strike these stubborn places within me, within us. Strike this unforgiveness in our hearts. Strike the bitterness. Strike the resentment. It's the source of many a health problem in us this morning. Strike it. Strike the unforgiveness. Strike the bitterness. Strike the anger. Strike the resentment. Strike it. Break its power over us and in us, Lord. Break it. Do it, Lord. Strike. Strike, oh God, with your hammer. Strike. Strike, Lord, the double-mindedness. Strike the divided heart issue. Strike it. Bring us into singleness of vision, singleness of eye, singleness of purpose. Together, bring us in. Unite us around the presence of the Lord and the glory of the Lord. Around the eternal purpose of God. Make us one with you in this, Lord. Raise up wise master builders. Raise them up. Living understanding, eternal understanding of the mind and heart of God and of the will of God and of the purpose of God and the desire of God and what the Holy Spirit is working unto and getting a people out unto you. Do it, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Strike, Lord. Fire. How many feel the fire? I can feel like I'm a torch up here. Fire, Lord. Fire. Love your presence, Lord. Let us be carriers of your presence. Everywhere, all times. Thank you, Lord. I think we should close by singing that. Would that be okay? Close by singing that song, guys.
stand to your feet. Let's let's love the presence of the Lord. Amen. We should, maybe we should just love the Lord who is the presence. Amen. Let's sing it to the Lord. I love.
We need your presence. We want your presence. Jesus. We want your presence, Lord. We want you to possess us as vessels, Lord. Carriers of the presence of the Lord. Father, I thank you that everything that you are speaking to us, Lord, Father, that each and every one of us, Lord, will get a hold of it. That it will get a hold of us. Father, that we will become that which you intended, that which you purposed even before you created us, Lord. There was a purpose. We thank you, Father God, that we will come to that purpose because of your Son, Jesus Christ, because he has set the standard, because he has set the plumb line, because he is the one who showed the way. And we thank you today, Lord, that we, your people, Father God, will yield to such a degree even as he himself yielded and said, not my will, but your will be done. Let us be a people, Lord, who allow your will to be accomplished in us so it can be accomplished through us. We appreciate it, Lord. We're so thankful we've been here to hear your invitation. But, Lord, we want to be more than just thankful. We want to be those, Lord, who say yes completely to it. That everything in us will bow to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Until Jesus is Lord over us. In us and through us. And we'll give you praise, Lord. We'll give you glory. And we'll give you honor because we ask it in the name of Jesus, who was and is and forever will be. Amen. All God's people said amen. Come on, give the Lord praise right now for a moment.